Hello and welcome to our lesson on section 7.7 .7 from our trigonometry class. We're going to be covering the sum to product and product to sum formulas. And the first thing I want to point out is though it's called sum to product, notice it's also sum and difference. So really it would be sum or difference to product and then over here product to sum or difference because this one has a minus these are both sums, okay? So you're going to need to know all seven of these formulas. We're going to look at five examples using these formulas, okay? First example, we're given the sine of 195 times the cosine of 75. And this would say use a product to sum formula to find the exact value. So here we're going to say the 195 is alpha and the 75 is beta. And so we're looking for a formula for sine alpha times cosine of beta. Sine alpha times cosine of beta right here. That's going to equal one half times the sine of alpha plus beta, which would be 195 plus 75, plus the sine of alpha minus beta, 195 minus 75. And that's implementing the correct formula for doing a product to sum here. Now the next step is to do the arithmetic. 195 plus 75. That adds to make 270. And 195 minus 75 makes 120. Now notice that both of these angles are unit circle angles. So then we can go to the unit circle at 270 and find the y coordinate and then at 120 and find the y coordinate. So sine of 270, that's going to work out to be negative 1 from the unit circle and sine of 120 Again, that's going to be square root of 3 over 2 from the unit circle. And then at this point, I need to get a common denominator so that I can uh, add my two fractions inside the parentheses. Negative 1 is the same as 2 over 2. And then I guess I could go ahead and distribute my half. So my final answer is going to be negative 2 plus square root of 3 all over 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And that should be my final answer in simplest radical form. Now if I want, I can grab my calculator and check that, which I think I want to. And we need to be in degree mode. Sine of 195. You want to put the times you can, times cosine of 75 equals, look at that, that gives the same radical answer as I got. So that makes me feel really good about that answer. All right, and that example is done. Next example, let's say that we have Cosine of 255 minus cosine of 195. And the instructions say find the exact value. So again, what we have here, we have cosine. We're going to call this alpha. And this angle we're going to call beta. We're looking for a formula for cosine alpha minus cosine beta. And that's going to be this guy right here, cosine alpha minus cosine beta. That's negative 2 
negative 2 sine of alpha plus beta over 2. Again, if you scroll back up and look at that formula, alpha plus beta over 2 times the sine of alpha minus beta over 2. And then we need to do the arithmetic to figure out what those angles are. So 255 plus 195 divided by 2, that works out to be 225. And 155 minus, I'm sorry, 255 minus 195 over 2, that works out to be 30. And again, both of these angles are unit circle angles. And so then all we need to do is go to 225 and find the Y coordinate, go to 30 and find the Y coordinate. Okay, so that's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 is the sine of 225 and 1 half is the sine of 30. And then we can simply multiply straight across, okay? Negative times the negative makes a positive. These twos will cancel and give me square root of 2 over 2. And that should be my final answer in simplest radical form. And let's verify that. So we're in degree mode. We need to do cosine of 255 minus cosine of 195, and we get the right answer. So again, that makes us feel good, verification with the calculator. All right, next example. Let's say that we're given sine of 4 theta times the sine of 2 theta. So this, again, this is multiplication. And 4 theta, we're going to call that alpha. And 2 theta, we're going to call that beta. And so now we're looking for a formula for sine alpha times sine beta. Sine alpha times sine beta right here is going to be 1 half cosine alpha minus beta minus cosine alpha plus beta. Let's see if we can remember that. One half cosine of alpha minus beta minus the cosine of alpha plus beta and now that I've implemented that product to some formula correctly, I need to simplify 4 theta minus 2 theta and 4 theta plus 2 theta. And my final answer, 1 half cosine of 2 theta minus the cosine of 6 theta. And if you want to distribute the one half, you can, but it's not necessary. This would be your final answer simplified completely. All right, I've got two more examples, I think. How many examples? Yeah, I've got two more examples and I'm done. All right, so here we go. Next example, let's say we have sine of 4 theta minus sine of 2 theta. Here we're going to call the 4 theta, we're going to call that alpha. 2 theta is beta. And now we're looking for a formula for sine alpha minus sine beta. Sine alpha minus sine beta. Here it is. That's going to be 2 sine alpha minus beta over 2 cosine of alpha plus beta over 2. Okay. 
here we go, two sine of, and it was alpha minus beta over two, cosine of alpha plus beta over two. Implementing that uh, sum to product formula, or in this case, difference to product. And now all I need to do is simplify the angles. So simplified completely, that's going to be 2 sine theta, because 4 theta minus 2 theta is 2 theta, but then 2 over 2 is 1. And 4 plus 2 is 6 theta divided by 2 is 3 theta. And there's our final answer simplified completely. And I've got one more example to look at. I did save the best for last. This is cosine of theta minus cosine of three theta all over sine theta plus sine of three theta. And we're going to verify that this fraction will reduce to just tangent of theta. So this is another trig identity, verifying a trig identity, or we could call this a trig proof. And let's see, where are we going to start? We're going to start on the more complicated side and try to get it to be tangent of theta. That's our goal, okay? So the first thing I want to notice up top is I can call this alpha and this beta. And at that point, I'm looking for a formula for cosine alpha minus cosine beta. Cosine alpha minus cosine beta. Again, that's going to be this guy right here. Cosine alpha minus cosine beta. And we're going to implement this formula. Okay? So that's going to be negative 2. Whoops negative 2 sine of alpha plus beta over 2 sine of alpha minus beta over 2. Next, in the denominator, we can call this alpha and this beta. And so we need the formula for sine alpha plus sine beta. Right here, sine alpha plus sine beta. And we're going to be implementing that formula in the denominator. Okay, so that's going to be 2 sine of alpha plus beta over 2 cosine of alpha minus beta over 2. Mm. Man, and it looks like we made it more complicated, but hang on, it's going to get better. Okay, next we're going to simplify 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to simplify all of those angles. Oh, and notice, since everything is multiplied, 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 since everything's a factor, I can go ahead and cancel these twos. And that's going to give me negative sine of uh, theta plus 3 theta is 4 theta divided by 2 is 2 theta. Sine of theta minus 3 theta is negative 2 theta, but negative 2 over 2 is negative theta all over sine of 4 theta over 2, that's 2 theta, cosine of negative theta. There we go. 
hey, look at this. Again, these are multiplied here, multiplied, multiplied, sine of 2 theta, sine of 2 theta, those will cancel. And since these angles are both negative, I'm going to have to implement the even odd properties for sine and cosine. Oh, and don't forget about this negative hanging out front. That would be terrible to forget about that. All right, so here we go. For sine of negative theta, remember that turns into negative sine theta. So for sine theta, the negative comes out front, but there's already a negative out front. Two negatives make a positive. So that'll simplify to just sine of theta. Cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine of theta. The even odd property for cosine says the negative just disappears. It's the same thing. And then we have a quotient identity that says sine over cosine is tangent. And now if you notice, bam, tangent theta equals tangent theta. I'm done. And that's it for this lesson. So if you have any questions or comments about anything I've covered so far, feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.